guys, it's Michael, and welcome to Let's Try Hardware Engineering from PB Studios. I'm going to mute that music because it doesn't seem to have a way for me to uh, change it. Um, so, Hardware Engineering, not to be confused with a new, another new early access game called Hardware Engineers, is a game about building circuits. I guess you can call it a game. It's kind of a learning tool slash sandboxy thing. Uh, again, it's by PB Studios. It came out on September 28th. I see that it has mixed reviews on Steam. Uh, that might be because it's a little non-intuitive, but um, I think it has a lot of potential. I don't know how long it's going to be in early access, but um, but it's actually already pretty good. And um, I haven't even really delved into the design and sandbox modes, and I don't even know what competitive mode is yet. So, and then there's modding too. So this is going to get out of control really fast, I can tell you that. Um, it's gonna be some crazy stuff going on here. I think it's really cool. Um, you know, I love to play games, but I have, um, I think that games like this where you have to think and build stuff are really an exciting addition to our world. And you know, there have been entries here and there along the years, but I wanted a game like this. I, I made a comment to one of the developers that I wanted a game like this since I got, you know, one of those little electronics exploration kits from Radio Shack with the little springs and wires and stuff and components that you could hook together and make flashing lights and whatever, you know, back in, I don't know, the mid 80s, I got one of these things. So it is, um, it, it's fun. Uh, now, it there are going to be people who just have zero interest in this, and that's fine. Uh, but let's just jump into it and try this out. I've done a couple of these, as you can see. I haven't done all of them. Um, I had a bit of trouble, um, but it was more of uh, not a problem with the game, as I had thought maybe it was, but a problem with uh, me not understanding how the connections were working. Um, so let's take a look at this and see how it works. There's a lot of reading involved in here, and uh, the text is small, so, you know, <clears throat> essentially this little intro here is telling us what components are unlocked. So we got an AND gate here, we've got an OR gate, an XOR gate, and a NOT gate. Um, and if you don't know about electronics, that's okay. Uh, we can, we'll look at how these things work as we go along. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of stuff I don't know. So, or a lot of stuff that I knew that I don't really remember that well. So, um, anyway, they kind of just go into a little discussion about engineering and circuits and how they work and stuff. The key bits of it being, I guess, that digital uh, circuitry is simpler than analog circuitry because you're dealing with essentially two two concepts, two voltages in the circuits that you're that you're dealing with. A high voltage and a low voltage are ones and zeros, digital bits, right? Um, for the most part, those are, well, maybe entirely, those are the things we're going to be dealing with in this. So that's kind of a lot easier than dealing with analog circuitry. Um, so each circuit consists of components and wires and uh, watch your wiring and stuff. And so they're kind of giving you an idea of how to do it. Look at the list of inputs and outputs. Decide what the thing's supposed to do. Um, notice if you have to fix any signals, take a signal from low to high or high to low, and uh, then look at the wiring connections and make sure that they're all good. And that is about it. So I'm gonna close this window here, and I'm gonna delete this, which is retained from when I did it the last time. Oops, I just clicked the wrong button. Well, all right, we'll get it back open then. Sorry about that. The interface is a little slow, so you kind of have to give it a sec to catch up. And and I don't know whether that's by design or or what. But anyway, let's go back to this, clear you, and then that trash can there will remove everything. So here's our task over here. You know, we need to design a device that will perform a logical multiplication on inputs A and B and forward it to the output O. All right. Since this is your first circuit, we'll provide step-by-step -step instructions for you. Find the inputs in the components window and place them on the table. The components window is here. Find a component that fulfills the requirement mentioned on the previous page, logical multiplication. Uh, to learn more about individual components, hover your cursor over them and a tooltip will be displayed. So if we hover over these, we see that this is a an input set to high, which is a one, an input set to low, which is a zero. But what we want are their inputs, which they're going to vary these based on when we're done building the circuit, we're going to run some tests over here, right? 
And so we need these guys because they're going to change the inputs here for us and see if our circuit performs. So I'm going to press G to get a grid up because I like neat. And I'm just going to click that and drag it down here. Now, unfortunately, these both look exactly the same, but if you hover over them, it'll tell you what they are. So input A, one bit. Input B, one bit. So we got our two inputs, and we were told in step one here we need to perform a logical multiplication on it, and we can talk about that in a second if you don't know what that means. Um, to be honest with you, I hadn't really thought about it along those lines. So we have 10 pages of items here, but hopefully the only thing that's unlocked here is the AND gate which is one of the most fundamental discrete components. Generally built using just two transistors, the output of this gate is one if if and only if both of the inputs are one. AND gates perform logical multiplication to predict the output multiply numeric representations of input signals. So let me click that and drop it in here. Now they've even represented it by a multiplication symbol as opposed to a traditional logic gate symbol for an AND, which is kind of this little half uh, half circle, elongated half circle thingy. Um, so an AND works like this. If this is one and this is one, the output is going to be one. If one of these is one and one of these is zero, the output is going to be zero. If they're both zero, the output is going to be zero. So if you think about it, right, it is a multiplication, right? One and one, one times one is one, one times zero is zero, and zero times zero is zero. So this fulfills our needs so all we have to do is wire it up we can uh, move it like that and connect it or we can press W and get the wiring tool if you just click and drag from one point to the other it will wire it up you can also get fancy and like I could drag it over here and then pick that up and drag it over here like if I wanted to right it's the same thing uh, sometimes you want to do that maybe to keep your circuit clear and that's our circuit. That's everything we need for this guy. So pressing this button will start and restart the simulation. I'm going to press it. It'll check the first step, one of four, and it was a success. They tested with two zeros and the output was a zero. So that's cool. So next step. It's taking a second, but it was a success as well. One and a zero yields a zero, as expected. The next step, I assume, will be a 0 and 1. 0 and 1 yields a 0. That worked. And a 1 and a 1 yielded a 1. So we finished it. And uh, they've got some components here, which I thought they already said are unlocked, but whatever. So, and you've got some details, how long it took you, and all that kind of thing. So let's do the next one, which gets a little bit tougher combinatorial logic which to be honest with you I couldn't give you a, a combination of logic I'm not sure that I could give, give you an explanation of what that means uh, what does it mean in logic in the EE meaning of the word electrical engineering meaning of the word can be either combinational or sequential combinational logic is sometimes referred to as time depend independent logic and is always function of present outputs, nothing else. Well, that makes sense. So sequential would be based on a timing mechanism or something. Um, and we go through lots of information here that you can read about yourself. I'm going to delete this previous circuit. I'm going to bring up the grid. And let's see what we're doing. This time we're doing a practical circuit. We're creating a nuclear bomb detonator. Why has it got to be a nuclear bomb? We don't know. It could just be, you know, a little bomb if you don't like nuclear bombs. So military has given us some guidelines so that we can't screw up that easily. So we have inputs. Detonate, control sequence passed, and detonate in haste. And our outputs are detonator enabled and detonated normally. So let's grab these and put them on the map here. So our input, this would be a person pushing a button, is an input signal to detonate the nuke. And then we have input control sequences passed, an input signal to inform the nuke that the military control sequence has been passed. So this is kind of like, maybe like a countdown or a chance for us to go, all right, uh, maybe we shouldn't do that. And then there is a detonate in haste, an input signal to inform the nuke that control sequence should be skipped there's no time for that and national security is in danger as it always is. 
So there's our three inputs. We might have to shift those around. And then we have an output, detonator enabled, one bit, output signal to start the explosion. Okay, and then we have an output which is detonated normally, one bit, output signal to be sent back to the HQ to tell whether the nuke was detonated with or without passing the control sequence. All right, so there's all our inputs. Let's see what it tells us. Output detonator enabled, this guy, the thing that lights the nuke, shall be one when one of the following is true. When one of the following, that's probably an important thing to know. Both detonate, which is here, and control sequence passed are one. Okay. So if you think about that already from the way they worded it, right? They've even got and underlined over here. We're probably going to be using a logical multiplication or an AND gate. So let's go ahead and just grab one of those and put it on there. We won't hook it up yet. We're just going to kind of try to keep track of what's going on here. Or both detonate and detonate in haste are one. Okay. So detonate and detonate in haste are one. That sounds an awful lot like another AND gate. And actually, maybe I'll move this in between these two because we need, if these two are one, then we're gonna detonate. And if these two are one, we're gonna detonate. Output detonated normally shall be one when both detonate and control sequence passed are one. So that's control sequence passed and detonate. So when both of these are one, we need this to be fired, right? So, and then the other underlined word here is or in between these two. When this and this or this and this are one, in other words, when this AND gate connected to these two returns a one, or when this AND gate returns a one connected to these two, then we're going to ignite this. So I think we need an OR gate here. Now an OR gate is called logical multiple logical addition. Uh, if either one of these is a one, then this is going to be a one. So and that's the case here. So if either one of these is a one, this will be a one. In which case, if these two are connected to here, one of these will be a one and therefore will ignite the bomb. Same thing over here. If either one of these goes, it will make this AND gate go high, which will make this OR gate okay, and that will go. Now we also have to figure out what to do with this guy. Essentially though, um, it is if we're pulling from here, right? Uh, shall be one when both detonate and control sequence passed are one. So if both of these are one, then we're going to output to here. So I think that sets us up. So we just need to wire this guy up. So we can put you to there. You to there. And this is where I was messing up before. I had a little red dot here because I didn't get it connected right. Okay. I think, now that has everything we need except for this guy. And I believe that if we just connect from here, and I don't guarantee I'm going to get this right. I might have to redo something. But I think that's going to get it. So let's start our simulation and see. Okay, first step, in which case nothing is high. Nothing is high on the output side. So that passed. Here we're saying detonate in haste is high, but it doesn't do anything because it would also need a detonate enabled uh, or our detonate button to be pushed over here, which we're not doing. Next test is detonate and control sequence passed, in which case detonate or enable, and you can see what's happening here. The green lines are high and the red lines are low, or ones and these are zeros, however you want to think of it. And uh, detonated normally goes as well. So that passed. And then our next test, we have detonate and detonate in haste, in which case we would expect the detonation to happen, but the detonated normally not to happen. Okay, that worked. In the case that all three are one, 
then we got ones on both. All right, well, that makes sense. I didn't really think of that case, but I guess it could happen. And then when control sequence is passed and detonate in haste, okay, can we, um, <laughs> it kind of blanked me out while I was still looking. Well, in any case, it worked. Uh, let's see, if uh, control sequence pass and detonate in haste go, then we don't get an output here. We get zeros here. But that's because we haven't actually pushed the button. So I think we're good there. Now, can we now go back to the next one, or are we just sort of stuck? Huh. I tell you what, I'm just going to restart this guy, and uh, I'm going to keep going to all the different steps. And do I have to let you catch up? I guess I do. We'll get our success again, and then we'll be able to go to the next one to be sure. There we go. Okay, we made it. All right. Okay. So the next one is truth tables. And we'll just do this one hopefully really quickly. And uh, we'll call it an episode. And uh, yeah, and so let me know what you think about this. And also uh, what you... Oh, I guess I worked on this one as well. So they're just going to tell us about truth tables. Uh, truth tables are a way of sort of summarizing what you expect the outputs to be rather than in words. So in this is a truth table for an XOR, which is called an exclusive OR. Uh, an exclusive OR gives us a 1 if either of the inputs is 1, but if both are uh, a particular state, then it outputs a 0. So, and it just goes through and describes what truth tables are and tells us we're going to use one to design a device. I'm going to delete this, get the grid open, and then let's look. So, a simple combinational device operating a switch on a bus door. The switch is there to open the doors when necessary. The doors may be open in different situations. If it's not blocked and the bus driver is requesting its opening, it will open. If it's not blocked and a passenger requested its opening, it will open. And if there's an emergency situation and either passenger or a safety device requested opening. Driver open input signalizes, signalizes that the driver wants the door open. I don't think that's a word. Passenger open is the same uh, for a passenger. Safety open one is when the bus safety device wants the door to open. Door blocked is self-explanatory. Open set to one tells the door to open. Inform about opening tells the driver that the door was open without his instruction, even either either for safety reasons or on passenger request. Okay. And finally, oh, okay, we get our truth table here. That's a big truth table. All right. Uh, well, let's see. Let's get our inputs here. So input driver open. So oops, you got to click it. That's the driver wants to open the door. This is passenger open, so passenger wants to open the door. Safety open, the safety wants to open the door, and door blocked. Okay, those are our inputs. Here's our outputs. Door open, that's what gets our door actually open, and then an output to inform about the opening. I don't know what these E's and D's are all about here. I'm, I'm not real sure. And then we need to, I frankly, the words do more for me than the zeros and ones in a big table. So uh, I'm going to look at that for now. And, uh, and maybe we'll go back to the truth table when we're trying to figure it all out. So door may be open in different situations. If it's not blocked and the bus driver requested its opening. So here's the driver wanting to open and here's the blocked thing. So let's move that over here and let's put that here for now. And let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. We may need it. So if this is high and this is low, well, that's kind of hard to compare. We would think we'd want like an AND gate here, right? Um, but what we need is the inverse of this, really. So. And you know what? I don't think I have actually solved this. We don't want an XOR gate. I'm looking for... I've lost my cursor for some reason. I want a NOT gate. Is that a NOT gate? 
That's an XOR gate. I don't want you. I want the NOT gate. <laughs> All right. So a NOT gate uh, inverts the signal, right? So remember, this is going to be high if the door is blocked, right? So the, if the door, if this is high, uh, we don't want it to work with this. We want it to work if the door is not blocked. So if the door is not blocked, it's going to be a zero, but it'll be a high when we flip it with this thing and put it into here. So if the driver opens the door and this is not blocked, then we get a door open signal. So that would work for this condition. And if it's not blocked and a passenger requested its opening, so let's move the safety opening over here and put the passenger thing here. So in theory, if we put an AND gate like right here, if the passenger requests the door to be open and it's not blocked, then we'd open the door. And then in theory, if either of these conditions is true, then we'll open the door, right? Now I think there's probably a twist here, right, that's coming, and that's gonna be this guy here, the safety device wanting to open the door. If there's an emergency situation and either the passenger or a safety device requested opening. Okay, here's our passenger, here's our safety device. We don't care about the state of the door being blocked in this case. We just want, okay, I gotta put that down and then delete it. If you select the wrong thing, just drop it down and then delete it. If either of these want the door opened, then the door should open. But, driver open, blah, 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 door blocked, uh, inform about opening, tells the driver the door was open without his instruction, either for safety reasons or on passenger request. So we need this to open the door and let the driver know about it. I, th I think we got the circuit here. Let's try it and see if this works. So if we hook that to that, we hook that inverter up to here. So it's gonna give us a one if we're not blocked. And how do I make you connect? Okay, good. Hook that up there, right. So now if either the driver or the passenger wanna open the door and it's not blocked, then we will open the door. Okay, cool. Now, this one is if either the passenger or the safety device want to open the door, regardless of whether it's blocked. Okay, here's my little red dot that I messed up the connection on before. Okay, that looks like crap, but I don't care. Then we're going to open the door. So let me build a line up to this point maybe just straight, and then hook that up. But we also need to tell the driver, which is what that is. Will this work? Um, I don't think it will, because I think when this goes high, it might drive that high. I think we might need another OR gate, and we do have budget for another OR gate. They, they have a sort of a component budget here. I think we might need to put an OR gate here. Door open right there. Okay, let's try wiring this up. So from here to there, and from here to there. All right, I think so, I think so. Let's do one more check. Okay, so if either the driver or the passenger want to open the door and the door is not blocked, then we will open it. So if either this conditions are true, this will be true. If this condition is true, this will be true. If either of those are true, then we will open the door. Uh, if the passenger wants to open the door, or the safety device wants to open the door, then we will open the door or and we'll also tell the driver that we've opened the door. Okay, let's see if this works. I don't guarantee it. Okay, that worked. We tested if the driver wanted to open the door, and the door did open. Okay, this one. Passenger opening the door, and the door opened, and the driver was informed. So that worked. 
All right, the safety device wanted to open the door. The door was open and the passenger driver was informed. Okay, the driver wanted to open the door and the door was blocked. The door did not open. We have 11 tests here to go through. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, so what happened here? Passenger wanted to open the door and the door was blocked. But the door opened and the driver was told about it. Now, why did that not work? Oh, because the passenger wanting to open the door went all the way up here and opened the door. So that is a problem. It shouldn't have done that. If this connection wasn't there, it wouldn't have done that. So we need to figure out how to, um, how to gate this so that it doesn't work. So what is the rule here? I'm going to have to cut this off shortly. We may have to come back for the next time around, but um, let's see. If there's an emergency situation and either the passenger or a safety device requested opening, then we need to open the door. And we can't care about the blocking. So we have to allow this to happen, don't we? Hmm. But this shouldn't be happening right now because the door is open and there's... Huh. I don't know. Let me see. Well, we know what the, I mean, we don't need to see the truth table to know what the story is. We uh, have passenger open. Is there a situation in which the passenger would open the door and the door was also blocked and we opened it. Now, here's the situation where the door is blocked and the passenger wants to open it and we say, no, door doesn't open. Here's another situation where we want the passenger to open the door. The um, SO, what is SO again? Safety open. So passenger wants to open the door, safety wants to open the door, door is blocked, we open it anyway. We open it anyway if the door is blocked. Huh. I tell you guys, I'm gonna have to figure this one out. I don't think I'm gonna get it this time around. Um, I will, uh, I'll put some thought into it off camera. If you guys have any ideas about how to solve it, please leave me a comment, let me know. I'm sure one of you knows uh, more about this than I do. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna save this circuit here. And uh, we only got three slots to save in. Or is this a slidey? No, I guess that's it. All right, so we're going to come back to this next time around. Let me know what you think uh, and if you got any ideas for fixing it. And if you want to see more of this, then I will talk to you guys later. Thanks very much for joining me. Have a good day.